Uh, hi, I'm Skinny Cheeks, and today I'll be going over my PvE DPS guide for the Magicka Sorcerer. Magsork is currently a strong option for DPS and is one of the easier classes for newer players to get good results on while still having a nice high-end potential that can be reached by more advanced players. This video will be going over the optimal race, Mundus, food and potions, three builds, a novice, intermediate, and an advanced build, champion points, and then we'll end the video with a parse from Wilfer on the 21 million raid dummy. I want to give a big thanks to Wilfer for sharing his setup with me that got him to 90k. It's a more advanced dynamic rotation, but I'll go over his tips on it. We've been on the same raid team in Wipes on Trash for a couple of years now, and it's safe to say he is one of the best magsorks in the game. Make sure to give his Twitch page a follow, I'll put the link in the description below. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. For race, the best option for damage is High Elf, followed very closely by Dark Elf, and then Khajiit. I'll put Bredden as a wild card, and it's a solid choice for newer players whose groups might not be optimized for sustain, since that cost reduction can end up putting them a lot closer to Altmer in certain scenarios. Plus the extra spell resistance can be really nice too. For veteran players, I definitely recommend High Elf though, due to the extra spell damage, and the spell recharge passive, which gives back roughly 640 stamina every 6 seconds and allows you to be a bit more aggressive with bash weaving. Dark Elf is really close though, only 125 Magicka behind, and has a bigger stamp pool which will also allow for a good amount of bash weaving, just not as much as High Elf. Overall, Dark Elf is probably less than 0.5% DPS behind High Elf. For the Mundus Stone, we're using the Shadow. For food, we're using Arteum Pickled Fish Bowl. This is slightly more expensive to craft than the standard blue bystat food, but has a little bit better stats on it. If you're having trouble sustaining with this food, I recommend using a set like Grundwolf, or changing to an Absorb Magicka Glyph, or using Sustained Skills, but if those options still aren't working for you, then you can use Clockwork Citrus. It does add a good amount of regen, but just keep in mind your Magicka Pool and your Health Pool will be a good bit lower with it. For our potions, we're using Spell Power plus Spell Crit plus Magicka. And then for easier, normal content that you don't want to waste expensive potions on, you can slot Inner Light and Crit Surge for your Spell Crit and your Spell Power bonuses. For Vampirism, I haven't found being a vampire to be necessary in a well-optimized group. It could give you a little extra sustain, but to me it's just not worth messing with. Now I'll go over the builds. All of the setups we'll go over will be for a one pet setup with the Twilight Tormentor. The Volatile Familiar does seem to have very slightly more DPS potential testing on the dummy, but it doesn't translate well to trials in most scenarios while the one pet setup does. The damage from the Familiar is inconsistent and the stun can be undesirable and cause your tanks not to be able to pull adds in. Also since you have to double bar pets, having two pretty much cripples your bar space as well, so dropping the familiar also frees up much needed bar space for other flexibilities like crit surge or a shield. Alright, the first setup we'll go over today is the novice setup. For the gear, we'll use a 2 piece Alambrus or Grundwolf, 5 piece False Gods Devotion. If you don't have the perfected, that's fine, the non-perfected works too. If you don't have that either, you can do a 5 piece Julianos. For the jewelry and the weapons, we'll use Mother's Sorrow. For your back bar, ideally you'll want to run a Maelstrom staff here, but if you don't have one yet, you can double bar Mother's Sorrow staves. For the jewelry traits, we'll go with 3 Bloodthirsty. Arcane is pretty good damage too if you don't have the transmutes to change it up, and can be a little better than Bloodthirsty in some specific scenarios. As a side note, Infused is slightly better than Arcane, so if you do have the resources to spring for two sets of jewelry, go ahead and make one of those sets Infused and the other one Bloodthirsty. For the weapon traits, we want Precise on our front bar and Infused on our back bar. And I wanted to give a shout out to the Asian God for helping out with the math on this. The 55 to 60k DPS range is about where Infused and Precise are even as a trait for your front bar. So if you are under that range, you want to go with Infused on your front bar. For the enchants, all max magicka on the gear, all spell damage on the jewelry, flame damage on the front bar, and weapon damage on the back bar. And like I mentioned earlier, if you are having a little trouble sustaining, you can swap out that flame damage enchant for an absorb magicka enchant. For our skills, on the front bar we're using Twilight Tormentor, Bound Aegis, Endless Fury, Force Pulse, Crystal Fragments, and the Greater Storm Atro. And on the back bar, Twilight Tormentor, Lightning Flood, Unstable Wall, Mystic Orb, then we have a Flex Spot for Channeled Acceleration, Crit Surge, or Conjured Ward, and then Elemental Rage for the Ultimate. 
We'll use this ultimate for our AoE damage and the Greater Storm Atro for single target damage. For the rotation, we'll pre-buff with Channeled Acceleration, then we'll drop our Storm Atro. If you are testing on the dummy, make sure not to drop it directly on the dummy because that will start combat. If you drop it on the side, then you have a couple seconds before it activates. And lastly, we'll pre-buff the bird. This will be the only time we use this skill. The rest of the fight, we'll just use it for its passive damage. Then for the ongoing rotation, we'll do Unstable Wall, Lightning Flood, Orb, Bar Swap, and then we spam Force Pulse or Crystal Frags if it procs seven times. That rotation will stay the same throughout. You'll just replace one of your Force Pulses with your ultimate whenever it's ready and replace Force Pulse with Endless Fury at 20%. This rotation works well for a nice mix of AoE and single target DPS. It's also static and really easy to remember. Now we'll go over the intermediate setup. For the gear, we're using a two-piece Grundwolf or Zahn, five-piece False Gods on the body, Mother's Sorrow on the jewelry and the front bar, and a Maelstrom Inferno Staff on the back bar. This is probably the most common and most versatile gear setup you'll see on Sork, and this setup can definitely be used with the advanced rotation as well. For the jewelry traits, we want all Bloodthirsty, for the front bar, Precise, and for the back bar, Infused. All Max Magicka enchants on the gear, Spell Damage enchants on the jewelry, Flame Enchant on the front bar and Weapon Damage Enchant on the back bar. For the skills, on the front bar we're using Twilight Tormentor, Daedric Prey, Endless Fury, Force Pulse, Crystal Fragments, and the Greater Storm Atro. And then on the back bar we're using Twilight Tormentor, Unstable Wall of Elements, Mystic Orb, Boundless Storm, and then Barbed Trap or Channeled Acceleration. For our ultimate on the back bar we're using Elemental Rage. You can also use Elemental Weapon instead of Force Pulse. It's slightly more single target damage, but a little bit less cleave damage. For the rotation, I want to give a shout out and thanks to Wrath for sharing this with me. This will be a two line static rotation. If you're wondering how Channeled Acceleration and Trap are both used in this rotation, we just pre-buff with Channeled Acceleration, then we take it off our bar and put Trap on there instead. The Channeled Acceleration buff lasts for 36 seconds, so even if you don't have access to add-ons where you can just switch the skill out with the press of a button, you'll still have plenty of time to make that swap. So after we pre-buff with Channeled and then swap in Trap, we'll cast our ultimate off to the side again to not initiate combat, and then pre-buff with the Twilight Tormentor. The first two skills in the rotation are technically part of the pre-buff process as well, so make sure you're standing back far enough where the Boundless Storm and the Orb don't hit immediately. Also make sure not to light attack in front of those abilities the first time, but then every time after that you will light attack in front of them. From there on out we have Unstable Wall, Bar Swap, Daedric Prey, 5 Spammables, Daedric Prey, Bar Swap, Trap, Orb, Unstable Wall, Bar Swap, 3 Spammables, Daedric Prey, three spammables, bar swap, and then it starts over. We'll replace a spammable with our ultimate whenever it's ready, and then replace our spammable with Endless Fury starting at 20%. A good way to look at this rotation is it's the same back bar each time, except Boundless Storm and Trap are alternated. And then for the front bar, you alternate starting and ending with Prey, with spammables in the middle, with starting and ending with spammables and having Prey in the middle. Now we'll move on to our advanced setup. This is the setup that Wilfer used to get his 90k parse. For the gear, we're gonna run two Zahn, five Mother's Sorrow, and then five Sororia, with Sororia on the front bar and a Maelstrom Inferno Staff on the back bar. For the jewelry traits, Bloodthirsty. For the front bar, Precise, and the back bar, Infused. For the enchants, All Magicka on the gear, Spell Damage on the jewelry, Flame Enchant front bar, and Weapon Damage Enchant back bar. And just a note, as I mentioned earlier, for situations where Sororia is not usable, use the intermediate setup. For the skills, on the front bar we're using Twilight Tormentor, Daedric Prey, Endless Fury, Elemental Weapon, Crystal Fragments, and Greater Storm Atro. And then on the back bar, Twilight Tormentor, Unstable Wall of Elements, Orb or Spell Symmetry, Boundless Storm, and then Barbed Trap or Channeled Acceleration. For the ultimate on the back bar we'll use Power Overload. You can also use Force Pulse over Ellie Weapon for a little more cleave damage. Now I'll go over the rotation. This is a fully dynamic rotation, but I'll go over the pre-buff and then the first 20 seconds of the rotation and then also notes from Wilfer. Also note that this one right here is more geared towards the trial dummy and uses spell symmetry over orb since sustain is a little rougher on the dummy than in an actual trial. But I'll also show another version of this with orb included 
and include links to both in the description below. So as you can see, we are using overload to start the parse up until the point where we drop our atro. I know a lot of people are probably gonna say this is dummy cheese, so I just wanted to get this out of the way beforehand and show a couple of parses from Wilfer actually using this in trial scenarios. Here's one of him using it on Locust Ease. You can see it did quite a bit of damage here. And then again on Yolnikren. Not quite as much here, but still a good bit of extra DPS. It works really well in these fights because you can build it up during the flight phases. You can also see here he had a really good uptime on Sororia. A lot of people say you can only use it on dummies, but here's clear evidence it is usable in a trial scenario. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's get into the rotation. You'll start with activating power overload and then pre-buffing with dark conversion and channeled acceleration. Then you'll swap these two abilities off for spell sim and trap. This can be done really quick and easy with add-ons like dressing room or alpha gear on PC and is also really common to do in trial scenarios right before engaging with the boss. Next, we'll pre-buff our Boundless Storm and our Twilight Tormentor, and then we start the rotation. We open with Unstable Wall, Bar Swap, Prey, five spammables, Prey, two spammables, and then Bar Swap, Unstable Wall, Bar Swap, two spammables, Prey, one spammable, and then that's right about the time we'll need to activate our ultimate if we started with 500 ult. If you started with less ult than that, then you'll have to activate it sooner. Wilfer recommends doing it once you're at about 200 to 210 ult, otherwise you'll miss your window and you'll have to manually toggle off overload. From here out, the rotation is basically just using your spammables with your dots being kept up dynamically. Wilfer recommends prioritizing the dots in this order, unstable wall, and then prey, then boundless storm, and then trap. Try and recast your trap when you have about 1.5 seconds of minor force left to maximize the buff up time. You'll also sometimes need to recast skills one second early if multiple dots are about to go down at the same time. When you do need to use spell symmetry, try to use it before unstable wall, and also try to use it as little and as late into the fight as possible, but early enough to not have to use it after 25%. After 20%, you'll stop casting prey unless you have a natro active, and you'll just use endless fury, unstable wall, and boundless storm only. After about 7%, don't recast Trap or Boundless Storm anymore. Uh, you can recast if you're at 8% and they're about to fall off. And then below 500k, just spam Endless Fury. And a quick note on flex spots. Boundless Storm is your first spot. You can flex out for something else if you need Crit Surge or a Shield. And then Endless Fury will be your next flex spot. And then finally, always use the Tormentor over the Matriarch unless you absolutely need the heal for something like Downstairs and VCR. And here's what this rotation looks like when you do have orb slotted. Like I said before, both of these will be in the description below. Now we'll go over the champion points. For the blue tree, we'll go 56 Elfborn, 49 Elemental Expert, 10 Spell Erosion, 61 Master at Arms, 19 Staff Expert, 72 Thaumaturge, and 3 into Piercing. We're doing 75 into this tree in order to unlock the Exploiter Passive. For the green tree, it's really personal preference and based on what content you're doing, but I'll go over a well-rounded setup that I use. 67 into Bashing Focus, 100 into Arcanist, 23 into Mooncalf, 40 into Tumbling, and 40 into Shadow Ward. Since the red tree is based around defenses, it will vary greatly depending on what content you're running. Well, that's going to be the end of this guide. I hope that no matter what level you're currently at, this can help you get just a little bit better. Feel free to stick around for the video of the parse by Wilfer on the 21 million raid dummy. And if you like the music you've been hearing on these, check out my SoundCloud. I have a lot of the tracks available for download for free. I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, bye. Dollars and 80 cents. Your payment transaction to